T with T Quilt, and I'm here after doing my live, after washing my hair, and I still need to twist my hair. And I am doing something that I should not be doing. I should be packing, trying to go on this getaway I'm going to. But I am actually working on the Go Spider Web die that I just showed you all in my live viewing that I purchased from Facebook Marketplace. So what I have done is I have done a lot of cutting of some scraps and I thought that I would share this process with you. So let me tilt the camera down and we're going to talk about what you need. made this block I haven't even made a test block I have just gone and pulled out a lot of scraps these are the last ones that I pulled and I have cut pieces and we'll talk about what I've cut and then I also pulled one background fabric I decided since it was going to be very scrappy and I don't know how it's going to actually look in the spider web design that I better pull one solid fabric just in case so I did use rotary cutting supplies so that I could pre-cut my shapes. And according to the instructions in here, which are very good, but if you're one of those people that don't like to read, you can watch this video. They tell you to cut two pieces of fabric and you're gonna cut those two pieces into two different sizes. So you need four pieces of fabric in order to make this one block here. So you cut four by eight and a half, and sometimes they may be a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, it's okay. And then you're also going to cut four by six. And you also are going to need your die and a mat and what you do is I found the easiest way for me is you're going to place your six inch pieces face down on your die because you're going to have to have reverse of these pieces and then your four by eight and a half pieces you're going to put on the die face up just like that and then we are going to roll this through our die cutter and as you know if you watch the live video I got an electric go big so I am just going to slide this in and just show you that I will put this through the cutter And then when it finishes, I will bring it forward. So it's done cutting. I lift this, slide off my pieces, and then I now have my pieces cut by the die. And how quick is that? And sometimes I would get little dog ears, and I mostly get it on this white background print. I'm trying to find my scissors so I can trim these threads so I lost battery power before and as I was saying I was looking for my scissors which seems to have run away all of a sudden so I'll just get another pair but every now and then when I'm cutting this white fabric it's like it doesn't want to cut unless I put paper on the blade but I just use my scissors and try to peel up what I can and then cut the rest of it off apart but it's only on when I'm using this white fabric which could be a little thinner than norm like the pieces underneath are actually cut so I'm thinking it's got to be the white
and of course this would happen of course when I'm actually recording because I haven't had this much difficulty in a while <laughs> so I've got all of this so you do have some waste with this and I like to show you everything but I got so much fabric I'm not going to use in my lifetime that having a little bit of waste is okay and I must have thrown one of my pieces in the trash right here so I had to go dumpster diving so you are actually going to end up with a piece and then you're also going to end up with reverse pieces and that's exactly what you want and then I just separate these into my piles and I'll show you my piles in just a minute and I will put these into the piles later because I just want to go ahead and do one more cut and this time I'm actually going to show you since I know that I'm making this scrappy I just take pieces of the same type put my six inches face down and just cover these three pieces of the die so for the reverse this corner piece you only need one so that's why you're having smaller pieces if you cut four by eight pieces for all of them just because it'll make your life easier it'll just mean that you will have extra of these corner pieces and it's not a big deal just keep them for a future project if you want so I have this down so I put my four by six inch pieces face down I put my four by eight and a half pieces face up I'm so I'm going to send this through the cutter. And whenever I bring my mat back over, I just automatically go ahead and flip it so I know it's on the right side. And then I remove my excess fabrics from the back. And see how this fabric, it cuts so much better when I wasn't using the white. And then I take each, since I only have just one of the shape, this just goes in the stack. These here, because I have them reversed, so I have a stack for reverse and a stack for upright. So I just take them and put them in their respective stacks. Same thing with these two here. Flip them, put them in their stacks. And then I also have my small pieces. So the last thing I need to run through is another set of my white. So I always put the face down piece, the smaller piece first, so I can see where my die is. Face up. And then run this through the cutter. And because I'm using this fabric, I'm also going to use paper and see if it will help. Take off the paper, put it in the trash, don't need that, and then I remove my backgrounds. last one I'm just putting them in the stacks and I'll be pulling those over in a minute okay so I am going to clear out this work area and I will be right back I 
have my pieces all cut out and you can see on the die board that my three smaller pieces they have notches up here at the top so I have all of those facing the same way that they are on the die and what happens is you're going to have half of your blocks with the white in the center and you're going to have half of your blocks with the print in the center and you're going to be swapping out particular things as you're making the blocks and so you can just rearrange your pieces accordingly And then you can start to piece your pieces together. Now, I don't know how many blocks I have cut out. I think I have like 22 or 23 maybe. I'm not really sure because I just cut scraps. So you're actually going to piece this all together onto here. Piece all of this over on this side. And you end up with a straight line that's going to be half of your block and you will end up with something like this and then when you piece the opposite side you'll end up with the reverse of that block over there and then you put those two together and you end up with your spider web block so i am not going to do any sewing now because i should not have even been doing any cutting so I will come back to you whenever I do some cutting. It will be when I return from my trip. But I just wanted to share this first part of this process with you. And I will see you in the next session. Or if I don't add it to this video, I'll see you in the next actual video. I'm back and I have laid out pieces for one block. So I have different fabrics in each position except for the center over there and maybe I'll switch that one out so it's not the same as any over here so I can sew this block together when it's sewn but I'm going to take my centerpiece and sew on each side and then sew the white pieces and then sew the end pieces so three pieces on each side of center and remember that we have regular pieces and then we have the reverse of those pieces as far as how you're cutting so i will go sew these two sections together and i will be back i'm back and i have sewn my two block halves together and it doesn't really state in the instructions right here how you press your seams but over here it has a statement that says when you sew piece A to B, press seams open. I did not do that. I actually pressed all my seams toward the dark. And I will show you the back of the block. So I did not press them open. I just pressed everything towards the dark. The only seam that I plan to press open will be this center seam because when it intersects with other blocks it's just like having two large one half square triangles so for me i am going to press them this way and hope that when i put the blocks together that i'm going to have the opposite color here as shown on this front panel this is what i will have so if i'm looking at this correct i should have opposite seams meeting up so it definitely should work it depends on how you're going to set your blocks like if you're using this setting here where your blocks are going to meet up with each other then i would say press your seams open for this method but for the one that i'm doing just a scrappy one i'm going to press the seams to the dark and then just press my center seam open so i'll go do that and i'll be back I'm back with my quilt block and it measures six and one half inches unfinished so when it's sewn into a quilt block it will equal six inch finish so you will need four of these in order to see the spider web come out so when you put four of these together then you'll end up with a 12 and one half inch unfinished block 
a 12 inch finished block. So I wanted to see how this would look if I put matching corners together. So I went and got my mirrors that I use in Stack and Whack. So if you're not familiar with this ruler, just go look at some of my Stack and Whack videos. And then I'm going to move this camera so you can see a little bit better. I like using mirrors because it will show you what something will look like before you do all the actual piecing. So if I wanted to put all of the print squares together when I put the squares together, it would look like that. Now I can't see how it's going to look when it's alternated. You've just got to uh, play with that a little bit. But that is an option is to put all of your prints together and then all of your white squares down here will also be together. So I'm going to like work on this, but maybe I will make some more block units. I'll chain piece what I have left. So thank you so much for watching. Please share my channel with your other quilting friends and please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye everybody.